This is unaltered video of the hydrogen boron plasma in an experimental primer fusion reactor. The primer fusion process produces no carbon emissions and the electricity produced will cost far less than other methods of generating electricity. Therefore primer fusion will not require government intervention to force people to reduce their carbon emissions. Instead the money people save on their power bills will be all the motivation they need. The critical breakthrough that led to the primer fusion concept was the development of these simple bowl-shaped magnetic arrays. The United States Patent and Trademark Office granted a patent in 2014 that covers these magnetic arrays. Over the years, many experiments were conducted with these magnetic arrays to determine how they could be used to optimize fusion reactions. I have now designed and constructed several different fusion reactors that allowed me to experiment with a wide range of conditions. Some of the critical parameters I experimented with were the shape of the magnetic bowls, the spacing between the magnetic bowls, the magnetic polarity of the bowls, the magnetic flux density of the bowls, the design and location of the electrodes in the magnetic bowls, the vacuum levels in the reactor chamber, the gases used in the reactor chamber the voltage, current, and polarity of the electricity flowing through the plasma. Here we see one of the experimental primer fusion reactors, the power supply, and the measurement module for the upper magnetic array. This image does not show the second power supply and measurement module that provides power to the lower magnetic array. Since I could not find commercially available high voltage power supplies that met my specifications, I decided to design and build my own. These high voltage power supplies allow me to adjust the voltage level, polarity, and frequency of the electricity flowing through the hydrogen boron plasma. You can find more information on these power supplies and their capabilities in my next video, Primer Fusion 2. In Primer Fusion 2, you will see how I utilize 3D printers to rapidly produce many of the parts needed for the Primer Fusion experiments. Primer Fusion 2 will also provide a more detailed explanation of the methods used in the Primer Fusion experiments. Boron is inexpensive, plentiful, and high in energy content. A tablespoon of boron fused with hydrogen will produce enough electricity to power the typical home for one year for less than $100. This diagram represents the fusion of a hydrogen proton and boron 11. This process is referred to as a neutronic fusion because relatively few neutrons are produced when these two elements undergo fusion. Here we see a representation of a hydrogen proton and a nucleus of boron-11. When the hydrogen proton and the boron-11 nucleus fuse, they form a highly excited and very unstable nucleus of carbon-12 that almost instantaneously splits into three highly charged helium-4 alpha particles that fly off at high velocities. These highly charged helium-4 alpha particles then collide with the collector to extract the charges, which are then run through a transformer to directly convert them to usable electricity without going through a heat conversion process, such as that used in the typical steam-based power plant. Here we see some micrographs of boron that melted due to the high temperatures in the primer fusion reactor. These high temperatures also distorted some of the components in the test reactor. 
This heat distortion is why the bowl-shaped magnetic arrays shown here are slightly misaligned. A significant redesign of a new permafusion reactor that is currently under construction should solve the problems with overheating. This new permafusion reactor will utilize a horizontal arrangement, high temperature ceramics, and a mineral oil cooling system to keep the components below critical temperatures to prevent damage. Shown here is a block diagram of the permafusion process. There are only three moving parts in the entire permafusion process, and all of the components shown here can fit into an area the size of a typical home refrigerator. For more information on the permafusion process and our goals, visit our website at permafusion.org. With permafusion, it will soon be possible to eliminate carbon emissions and significantly reduce energy costs at the same time.